Tayshawn, thank you uh, for taking some time to talk with us. I guess, can you start? I know you've been away from Kentucky for a while, but you mm -hmm. always seem to find time to come back and work with these kids. Can you kind of just take us through the camp experience and why that's important to you? Um, you know, when I first got drafted and, you know, started playing basketball in Detroit, you know, my, my, my whole thing was what can I do when I go back to Kentucky? And obviously the number one thing is, you know, getting into basketball camps because that's the, the one thing that you can start, you know, interacting with the kids. Um, you know, they watch you play on TV and stuff like that. But when it's time to spend time with them, I know they want to see you in person and things like that and ask you funny questions and all that type of stuff. So that's the perfect time that you could, you know, chill with them and teach them the game of basketball. But they, also, they can also get a feel for who I am as a person and ask me any questions they want and stuff like that. Cause it, so it kind of makes their day, day that way. So. It helps out. Did you have, when you were younger, a guy that you would have liked, an NBA player you would have liked to, to go to a camp with and interact well, with? Well, you know what? Um, you know, growing up in Cali, I was a big Magic Johnson fan and, you know, watching him in the 80s and stuff like that, just how he just demanded the floor and just a floor general. So that was my guy watching and, and, and just, you know, when he had a camp, I was going to be the first one in line. Yeah. So that was the one camp in the summertime that I could go to, you know what I mean? And, you know, just an unbelievable experience. So that was the one guy that I always looked up to and watch how he played the game. So when I started playing, I wanted to be a pass first guy, you know, kind of, you know, shoot second and things like that. So it kind of helped me understand the game of basketball in, in a lot of different ways watching him. And, and there's a lot of magic in your game. And we saw that uh, when you were at UK, I think the defining moment in a lot of people's minds is that game against North Carolina. We put on Twitter and Facebook, do you want to ask Tayshawn a question? And that was everybody wanted to ask. <laughs> Can you take us back? That was the first game I ever went to at Rupp Arena. And I remember the place going nuts. Chris Lang from North Carolina telling people to be quiet. Right. Can you take us through what you remember from, from that game? Um, the one thing that I can remember is, uh, you know, uh, after I made the first two, you know, after that point, I was just going to keep shooting threes till I miss. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just one of those things. I'm going to see if I'm going to keep, you know, keep rolling. So once I hit the third one, um, and I kind of got a one-on-one -on -one situation and kind of, back the guy up. Once I made that one, then I kind of knew that, you know, I was going to be feeling good. So, uh, but by the time I hit that fifth one, you know, we got a steal and I'm on a, and Gerald, I think, kicked me the ball and I'm coming up the court. I already had in my mind, you know, the minute I come across half, I'm letting it go. You know, whatever happens, happens, you know what I'm saying? So, it seemed like that ball was in the air for so long, you know what I mean? And I'm like, please go in, because I know if this go in, the crowd going to go crazy right, at this yeah. point. And if I miss it, Tubby probably be like, all right, I'm going to get him out of the game because he's trying to, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> once it went in, man, it was just an unbelievable moment because, you know, I never heard Rep Arena that loud when I hit that fifth three. So, you know, amazing experience. Um, you know, just one that, you, you know, that I'll never forget. In that kind of, you know, you're known for big plays. I mean, even going in your, in your professional career when you're with Detroit, that, mm -hmm. that block on Reggie Miller is one of, I think, one of the iconic photos of, of the NBA. That play kind of, I think launched you into everybody, kind of everyone knew who Tayshawn was. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you look back and say, man, if I had missed that by an inch, things would have been a little different? I mean, do you think about that at all? You know what? Uh, uh, you know, going into that game, which was game two of the Eastern Conference Finals, um, Sheed had guaranteed victory. You know, we had lost game one, Reggie hit a three with a few seconds left. You know, we lost the game by one or two points. So Sheed come out the next day at practice said, you know, talking to the media no matter what, we win in game two. So y'all can write it, you know, in the newspaper tomorrow before the game, whatever y'all want to do, we're going to win game two. So uh, getting into the game and, you know, it was a struggle back and forth. I mean, the game was in, I think Indiana scored like 68 points, 67 points, you know, so it was a defensive style game. So, uh, you know, both teams grinding and, uh, you know, when uh, Chauncey turned that ball over and, you know, the one thing I had in my mind is I know Reggie don't like to dunk the basketball. You know, Reg, Reggie occasionally dunks the basketball. So I already got in my mind where I need to, you know, go up and try to block this shot without even trying to make any contact with him. So once that play happened and, um, you know, it was a ceiling deal in the game and we going to win the championship that year, uh, it was always what could have, should have happened, you know, what would have happened. You know, we played Indiana the next year and there was a big article about what if Prince didn't block the shot? What would happen to the Pacers? Would they went on to the finals and stuff like that? Because if they go up 2-0 in that series, you know, there's a pretty good chance that they can come out successful because we were so good defensively, both teams were. So, 
it was an iconic play, and I think it was very pivotal in us winning the championship. Game. Somebody asked us on Twitter, wanted to know if, if Reggie shudders when he sees you these days. Does he, does he get a little nervous if he sees you? No, uh, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't. But the thing is, is every time I'm playing and he do the game, Charles Barkley or Kenny Smith brings it up. So <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know, he, gets, he gets, gets bothered by it a lot. But, you know, I've, I've always, always admired Reggie, respect his game. And, you know, one of the things that he did real well, I mean, one of the things that he did for me is after the game, he gave me a jersey and he signed it, you know what I'm saying? Great block, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So, you know, obviously great guy, you know what I'm saying? You know, it was a pivotal point in his career where he was, you know, closing in towards the end of his career trying to get a championship. And to be able to do that, you know, for me was, you know, you know, top-notch guy and, you know, definitely respect him a whole lot. That championship team, those Pistons teams, you guys were celebrated for kind of being a team, a right. collective force. Cal at Kentucky is trying to do that with a lot of talented guys. What advice would you give these freshmen that are trying to fit in or, or the things you learned from that championship run, what it takes to be a, a true team and win a championship? Well, the thing is, you know, from my perspective, especially being a young guy on that championship team and the guys that I was playing with in the starting lineup and the guys who were coming off the bench was much older than me as far as in the league. You know, a couple guys two, three years older than me, but from a league perspective, you know, I've stayed four years in college. Those guys left early, so they had more years of service than me. So. Uh, I was able to learn from a lot of different guys. So, um, you know, Joe Dumars had built a, a, a defensive style grind out team the way they were, you know, bad boys era, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, you know, I fit it right, right, right in with that, you know, defensive style, um, you know, unselfish play and stuff like that. So we had a whole bunch, bunch of guys that were so unselfish, but defense first. So that's what made us, uh, you know, when, when, we, when we won the championship, everybody was talking about no all-star, no, no superstar caliber players on that team. And, uh, but the reason why we got it done is our chemistry was so good and uh, nobody cared who got the credit. So, you know, to those guys coming in at, at UK that are freshmen uh, under Cal, pretty much he's, he's talking to them about the importance of, you know, no matter who gets the credit, if everybody do their part, you're gonna end up winning and being successful. So that's all that matters.